been reserved for the king's pleasure. Therefore the king's portion is reserved for you. A prepared position awaits you with the king of kings sitting at the head of the table. He desires that you sup with him in the presence of your enemies. By accepting his personal invitation, your needs are met, the desires of your heart fulfilled, and to top it off you will receive the exceeding abundant above all you can ask for or even think of. Imagine that. The more you understand the king's heart, without a shadow of a doubt, you will begin to make more room for heaven's treasures. Welcome to King's Portion. This is Catherine Joy Foster. The theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. And this is part 198. In Genesis, the earth was without form, void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. God never created it that way, but after Satan lost his citizenship in heaven and was thrown out along with the one-third angels that are now demons, the earth became a landfill that corrupted the earth. Now recreated in the image and likeness of Elohim, you still have both the authority and power to transact business to own and to occupy. After Jesus' resurrection and before the rapture of the church, God assigned you, yes you, to reign as a heaven's ambassador on earth, even right now. God exposed, imposed, and deposed Satan's lie that was fabricated evidence appearing real that he and his cohorts thought could be accomplished, although it was impossible all the time. Never permit any weapon formed against you to prosper. God, the Father, God, the Son, and God, the Holy Spirit, always cause you to triumph by already giving you the victory. Anything you will not rule will eventually rule you. Now better understand what you already have the title deed to possess if you do not know what you have then you will not know if you lost it either. God has blessed you to be fruitful, multiply, replenish, subdue, and have dominion. So own and occupy. Now this first section, we are going to address your level of security and maturity determines what you do with what you own. First, we're going to look in Luke, the 15th chapter, the 11th through the 32nd verses from the King James Version. And this is Jesus teaching. And he says, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth to me. And the father divided unto them his living, not Many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country and there wasted his substance with riotous living. And when he had spent all, there arose a great famine in that land and he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with the husk that the swine did eat. And no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many higher servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare? And I perish with hunger. I will rise and go to my father and say unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee and am no more worthy to be called thy son and make me as one of thy hired servants. 
and he rose and came to his father. But when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight and am no more worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet and bring hither the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found and they began to be merry. Now his elder son was in the field and as he came he drew near to the house and he heard music and dancing and he called one of the servants and asked what these things meant. And he said unto him, Thy brother is come, and thy father has killed the fatted calf, because he has received him safe and sound. And the older brother was angry, and he would not go in. Therefore came his father out and entreated him. And he answered to his father, Lo, these many years do I serve thee, and never transgressed, at any time thy commandments, and yet thou never gave with me a kid that I might make merry with my friends. But as soon as thy son was come, which devoured thy living with harlots, thou have killed for him the fatted calf. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me, and all that I have is thine. It was meet that we should make merry and be glad. For this thy brother was dead and is alive again and was lost and is found. So you see in that story, it's showing both the sons as being both insecure as well as immature. Let's look at that story a little closer. Now, this was the father who gave his inheritance to the elder son who never owned any of it, as well as to his youngest son who occupied it, but wasted it all. God made a way to recover all, whether you only have one piece left or one piece missing. Whatever you have been defrauded of, approach your heavenly father to restore you plus sevenfold in all the substance of Satan's house. Jesus' blood paid for all your salvation benefits. You can never lose which cannot be breached. By faith, unlock your eternal inheritance that begins on earth. You own at your new birth, and you occupy every Kairos time. So you see, even in this story, you could see God's heart to actually give without withholding. And that was even based on having no one have died to receive the inheritance. Now that was Jesus telling the parable so that we could see in our lives to remove everything that's insecure and move everything that is immature so that we would do right with what he's given us. But we don't have to do it by ourselves. We have the word of God and we have the spirit of God will help us to be secure and mature. In Acts, the 26th chapter, the 18th verse from the King James Version says, and this is Jesus saying to open their eyes, to turn them from darkness to light and from 
Satan into the power of God that they may receive the forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them that are sanctified by faith that is in me. And this, this is Jesus speaking that is in him. Now, this was what Jesus gave to Paul as his assignment, showing that he was bringing many people to Christ. And this is the experience that we have. So we own at our new birth. Now, again, in Acts, the 20th chapter, the 32nd verse from the King James Version talks about our occupying at every Kairos time. And that is when God's time meet our opportunity because we're in the right place at the right time and we are ready. And it says, and now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. Now remember that build you up is like building a house and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. So you can see this word sanctified is in the scripture for occupying and it's also in the scripture for owning. And when you think of uh, sanctification, it is now we are being cleaned up to actually do what God desires that would tend to his good, acceptable, perfect will with what he has given us and, and that we won't do our own thing in our own way, but we will honor him. So let's look at definitions from the 1828 Webster Dictionary on what security is. It means protection, effectual defense or safety from danger of any kind, that which protects or guards from danger, and then also freedom from, from fear. The other side, insecurity means uncertainty, want of safety, danger, hazard, exposure to destruction or loss. Now let's look at mature. Mature means ripe, perfected by time or natural growth, brought to perfection, completed, prepared, ready. Now the side of mature is immature and that means not mature or ripe, unripe, that has not arrived to a perfect state, not perfect, not brought to a complete state. It also means hasty, too early, that comes before the natural time. Now, when we think of perfect, we want to think of the word perfect. And that's what David used in the scripture. He said, Lord, perfect that concerns me and forsake not the work of your own hands. What it's saying, if we're going to be perfect, it's because we're abiding in Christ. We have the word of God and we have the spirit of God because that is what Jesus showed us during his earthly ministry. He could not thrive without the word of God nor the spirit of God and God's at his side even though he was in the earth. What is a recurring message we'd like to leave with you today? The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has conferred to all mankind. Now, the one who rules is the same one who owns and occupies. The larger your territory, the greater your options are. Open your heart to God and allow him to enlarge it with his dreams. Open your mouth to Jesus and allow him to fill it with the Logos word and the Rhema word that enlarge over any enemy. Open your womb that is non-gender specific to Holy Spirit so he can enlarge your territory. Then Elohim, the triune God, will enlarge your steps so that you will never be overthrown. I'll be right back after this message from my sponsor. Please plan to stay tuned for the entire program today. The Catherine Joy Foster Music Ministries is a 21st century multimedia marketplace ministry. In your discovery, you will find the power of God present to go where you are, to take you where Jesus is, raising you up, repairing you, restoring you, 
so that you can be as Jesus is in this world. Now available for workshops, banquets, conferences, webinars, concerts, prayer meetings. You can call area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Again, that's area code 216-486-8615, extension 1. Proud to be an advertiser for King's Portion Web Radio. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has conferred to all mankind. The one who rules is the same one who owns and occupies. The larger your territory, the greater your options are. Open your heart to God and allow him to enlarge it with his dreams. Open your mouth to Jesus and allow him to fill it with the locals word and the rhema word that are enlarged over any enemy. Open your womb that is non-gender specific to Holy Spirit so he can enlarge your territory. Then Elohim, the triune God, will enlarge your steps so that you will never be overthrown. Now this second section, we are going to address your level of security and maturity will determine how you build. In Luke, the sixth chapter, the 47th through the 49th verses from the King James Version, this is what Jesus taught in one of his parables. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my words and doeth them, I will shew him to whom he is like. He is like a man who built in the house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose, the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell, and the ruin of that house was great. So this is Jesus showing us the distinction of how we should build the house, making sure that everything is there. For when we are secure and mature, we won't try to shortchange our project or hastily get done with something, and it is not safe and sound. Let's look at what Moses said in Deuteronomy the 32nd chapter, the fourth verse from the Amplified Version of the Classic Convention. He says, he is the rock. His work is perfect for all his ways are law and justice, a God of faithfulness without breach or deviation. Just and right is he. So you can see in this scripture that Moses is identifying who the rock is. Let's also look in Ephesians, the second chapter, the 13th through the 22nd verses from the King James Version. And this is Paul telling us how the church was built to accommodate those who were under the law because they were the real heirs to Abraham. But then when we are entering into our relationship with Christ, then we become heirs by faith. And so this is saying to remove any idea of excluding anyone from coming to Jesus Christ as Lord. And it says, but now in Christ, ye who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace, who have made both one and have broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of the commandments contained in ordinance, for to make in himself of twine one new man. So, making peace. That means he was making the Jews and the Gentiles come into being one new man. 
the body of Christ in which Jesus is the head and that he might reconcile both the Jews and the Gentiles unto God in one body by the cross having slain the enmity thereof and came and preached peace to you who are far off and to them that are near for through him we both jews and gentiles have access by one spirit holy spirit unto the father now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, showing that we are heirs of God, joint heirs with Jesus Christ, a habitation of God through the Spirit, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. So when you're looking at the chief cornerstone, that is the piece of the building that makes that all the building be erect, stand erect, in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Again, that's sanctified unto the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for an habitation of God through the Spirit. So there will be no division when we understand that we have all been included there is no exclusions now in first peter the second chapter the fourth through the sixth verses from the amplified version the classic edition it says come to him speaking of the chief cornerstone jesus christ then to that living stone that's jesus christ which men tried and threw away but which is chosen and precious in god's sight he was rejected and despised by men this is come and like living stones that would be us the jews and the gentiles be yourselves built into a spiritual house for a holy dedicated priesthood so we are king's priests to offer up those spiritual sacrifices that are acceptable and pleasing to God through Jesus Christ, that is living sanctified unto him. For thus it stands in scripture, behold, I am laying in Zion, the church, a chosen, honored, precious, chief cornerstone, Jesus Christ. And he who believes in him, who adheres, trusts in, and relies on him, shall never be disappointed or put to shame why because we are believing the best when we believe that jesus christ is savior and lord now let's also look in psalm the 118th division the 22nd through the 25th verses from the king james version it says the stone which the builders refused is become the headstone of the corner so this is the prophetic word that's written in scripture showing that this is jesus christ and it says this is the lord's doing and it is marvelous in our eyes because everything that jesus has done he included us we are co-crucified co-buried co-resurrected co-seated and we have co-perception we have the mind of christ but we also have co-participation so we can work with him and he can work through us as he lives through us it goes on to say this is the day and this day is speaking of the atonement day which means sabbath rest for us this is the day which the lord has made we rejoice and be glad in it because now he has removed all the things that were laborious so that we can receive the favor of God. And it says, save now, I beseech you, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Why is he saying now? Because the atonement day, Jesus' sacrifice gives us Sabbath, which gives us the day of rest, 
but it also gives us the finished work. So because the finished work of Christ is finished, the receipt can be received now. But we need to be both mature and secure for it to remain the way the Lord desires it. Now in our program today, you're going to enjoy the music of D. White as he presents Armor of God soldier why because we're in the soldier realm because we have something to fight for and we also have something to fight with is god's armor as our defense so let's hear army of god soldier d white and i'll be right back Strong in the Lord with the power of His might. I got His armor on and I'm ready to fight. I stand against Satan in this battle with sin. Against all evil forces of this world we live in. No weapon formed against me. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed with the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine. I'm more than a conqueror I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I'm a soldier In the army I am a soldier In the army of the Lord I have my waist right with the belt of truth I got my feet prepared for the gospel of peace And I got my breastplate of I got my shield of faith to protect me from the wicked one. No weapon formed to get speed. I am a threat to the enemy. I am clothed by the blood of the Lamb. I'm a branch on a vine, and I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a soldier. us on the web at blog.kingsportionlive.com. That's blog.kingsportionlive.com. Thanks for staying tuned to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program is the tsunami blessing inside and out. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has come to all mankind. Now the one who rules is the same one who owns and occupies. The larger your territory, the greater your options are. Open your heart to God and allow him to enlarge it with his dreams. Open your mouth to Jesus and allow him to fill it with the locals word and the rhema word that enlarge over any enemy. Open your womb that is non-gender specific to Holy Spirit so he can enlarge your territory. Then Elohim the triumph God will enlarge your steps so that you will never be overthrown. Now, this third section we are going to address 
Your level of security and maturity determines the longevity of what you build. In 2 Chronicles, the 7th chapter, the 12th through the 16th verses from the King James Version, it says, And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said to him, I have heard thy prayer and have chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. And if I shut up heaven, there'll be no rain. Or if I command the locusts to devour the land. Or if I send pestilence among my people. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land so it's showing here is yes that when he say he has his name on someone he's saying that i have adopted you but then there are some things that we need to do to make sure that we are not only saying that we are sanctified but we are living sanctified and before him and so we have an assignment as a king to reign and as a priest to represent and in the representation it will also be for us to pray just like king solomon did he was showing that there was a part of him that was ruling but there was a part of him was also representing the people before god and god to the people and that would be our assignment as well so he's saying that when we come and honor him and is in humility, then we can come before him because that shows our signs of longevity with our relationship with him as well as what we have built. And also we want his presence wherever we are. And then this is what God's response was to King Solomon, he says, now my eyes shall be open and my ears attend to the prayer that's made in this place. For now I have chosen and sanctified this house that my name may be there forever and my eyes and my heart shall be there perpetually. So you're looking at God as omnipotent, all-powerful, omniscient, which means he's all-knowing, and omnipresent, which means he's always there now, perpetually, forever. Let's also look in Proverbs, the 24th chapter, the third through the fifth verses from the King James Version. It says, through wisdom is a house builded, and by understanding it is established, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all precious and pleasant riches a wise man is strong yes a man of knowledge increases strength so it's saying when we build anything it could be a business a house an organization we're building it first on the wisdom of god not the wisdom of the world the understanding of god not only the understanding of the world and the knowledge of God and not the knowledge of the world alone. We are going in and researching and searching God so that we can build what he desires for us. And then in Proverbs, the 24th chapter, the 27th verse gives us how we should build. It says, prepare thy work without. That's getting a plan before you build. Make it fit for thyself in the field. That means where you are, you build from where you are. You may have a vision to go further, but you start with where you are and where God designs for you to be. And that requires having faith because what God has for us is usually impossible for us to do in the first place. So that means that with God, all things are possible and no word from God will ever be without power or without fulfillment for what he said he will do. And also it is possible for those who believe it's possible 
even though it looks like it is impossible. Now let's take a look at 2 Chronicles, the 24th chapter, the 13th verse from the King James Version. And then we'll read it also from another version. It says, so the workmen wrought and the work was perfected by them and they set the house of God in his state and strengthened it. It's showing now this is healing coming upon the house. So we know we have to make room for how we build that what we build, we also maintain it as a part of our stewardship. And then in the Dual Reams, the 1899 American edition, it says, and the workmen were diligent and the breach of the walls were closed up by their hands and they set the house of the Lord in its former state and made it stand firm. Now you see now there's not only the healing coming upon the house, but there is not a breach left. I'll be right back after this message from our sponsor. I was just standing there basking in the sun and all of a sudden I was soaking wet. There wasn't a sign in the sky, so I was unprepared without an umbrella. But in the end, it just didn't matter. I loved every minute of it. I knew I was living under open heavens. It really does give new meaning to being overtaken by blessing, not a dry spot. This is Fran the Fan of H-D-O-R. Uh-oh, here comes the rain again. been listening to King's Portion Live with web host Catherine Joy Foster. Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is a tsunami blessing inside and out. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has conferred to all mankind. The one who rules is the same one who owns and occupies. The larger your territory, the greater your options are. Open your heart to God and allow him to enlarge it with his dreams. Open your mouth to Jesus and allow him to fill it with a locust word and a rhema word that enlarged over any enemy. Open your womb that is non-gender specific to Holy Spirit so that he can enlarge your territory. Then Elohim, the triune God, will enlarge your steps so that you will never be overthrown. Now this fourth section, we are going to address your level of security and maturity acknowledges your need for reinvention by the Spirit of God and the Word of God. So we are going to address dealing with the wounds that we receive in life where we might be looking at their self-inflicted or what even others have done to us emotional wounds so that you can receive healing hedging and hushing of that breach now you can voice activate the following three scripture references to heal hedge and hush any breach this is showing that when you have his word you can agree with him and that would be through the leadership of Holy Spirit. So we want to agree with God and receive the promises, the word of God, so the spirit of God and the word of God can reproduce the remedy for you in you. God's design closes every breach until there is not one cut or tear left unresolved. Healed breaches. Psalm, the 60th division, the second verse, acknowledges God as your supernatural healer. It says, Thou have made the earth to tremble. Thou have broken it. Heal the breaches thereof, for it shaketh. Now you may even see the misalignment in your life yourself. Your world may seem like it has experienced an earthquake, even tipping the scales, because nothing is impossible with God. You called out to him for help because he always has maximum recovery on his mind for you. Knowing Jesus, Holy Spirit, and God created the earth to perfectly revolve around the sun 
and never wiggle or wobble, you better understand what authentic balance really means. Since the nations are just a drop in a bucket to God, he can put you back together as his reinvented masterpiece as well. Similar to a dancer, equilibrium must be achieved simultaneously and spontaneously with her midpoint. That is realizing soundness from the inside out. Everything transformed when you are whole and well. You too can discover the center of your life you may have never experienced or enjoyed before. Even if you have somehow gotten lost along the way or wandered off the beaten path, God's positioning system, his GPS, has never, not even once, lost sight of you. Not only hilt breaches, but number two, hedge breaches. Amos, the ninth chapter, 11 through the 15th verses, acknowledge God as your supernatural hedger. From the King James Version, this is a promise of God. In that day, I'll raise up the tabernacle of David that has fallen and close up, that means hedge the breaches thereof, and I will raise up his ruins and I will build it as the days of old, that they may possess the remnant of Edom and of all the heathen, which is called by my name, saith the Lord that doth this. Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that the plowman shall overtake the reaper and the treader of grapes, him that sow a seed, and the mountain shall drop sweet wine, and all the hills shall melt. And I will bring again the captivity of my people of Israel, and they shall build the waste cities and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and drink the wine thereof and they shall also make gardens and eat the fruit of them and i will plant them upon their land and they shall no more be pulled up out of their land which i've given them saith the lord thy god the most construction sites seal off access from potential problems this preserves what is within their perimeter what is on the inside stays in and what is on the outside stays out the two areas are never confused now once the creation has been totally assembled the owner may continue the protective covering for the aforementioned reasons god is always your defense even after construction in his promises is full assurance that nothing and no one will ever cross your property line with any intentions to harm you. And that is why you want to plead the blood over everyone, everything, and every place that you are or go because of it is a protective shield. The Holy Spirit is a protective shield. The Word of God is a protective shield shield now the third area is hushed breaches so it's not only healed breaches hedged breaches but it's hushed breaches in proverbs the 14th chapter 30th verse acknowledges god as your supernatural husher from the king james version it reads a sound heart is a life of the flesh but envy the rottenness of the bones the heart in this verse is your inner being, where your mind, your will, and your emotions are. Soundness is so vital because what you are on the inside will eventually be displayed on the outside. In Hebrew, marpe is the word for soundness, which is defined as curative. Now, the root word stems from another Hebrew word, Rafi, which means to cure, repair, and make whole. It also uses the word placidity. And that expression alone that you know that your breaches can be healed and hedged, but not hushed. Why? Because you're still talking about the pain as if you weren't healed or hushed. And that's why you know you need additional supernatural therapy to complete maximum recovery. 
Here are some examples of what you experience and what you enjoy when you have hushed breaches. You are gentle, quiet, undisturbed, serene, mild, unruffled, tranquil, without disturbance. You can have the peace of mind and heart that can be seen by the sweetness of your disposition. You are no longer stormy, and that is supernatural inner healing. Now, in a good sense, that's showing that you are transported with love. God not only has love, God is love. Transported with love everywhere you go. Now, Luke, the 15th chapter, the Third through the seventh verses give you an indelible picture to imagine that magnitude of tranquility. From the King James Version, it says, And Jesus spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness and go after that which was lost until he find it? And when he has found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying to him, Rejoice with me, for I found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than the other ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. While a shepherd is caring for his 100 sheep, one wanders from the rest of the flock. He realizes that one sheep is lost. He searches for it until he finds it. He places the little sheep around his shoulders and carries it all the way home, rejoicing all the time. What he owned is safe and sound. You could see the maturity and the security of the shepherd. Now, Jesus, our good shepherd, is a personification of God's perfect love. He clearly understands that when he carries you as one of his sheep, you will always rest satisfied in God's wraparound love. Now, as we read 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 4th through the 8th verses, you see Jesus wrapping you around his shoulders, carrying you gently and graciously. Healed, hedged, and hushed breaches are a significant part of what God desires you to experience and enjoy all the time. That is why we must be open to remain whole and well. So I'm going to read 1 Corinthians, the 13th chapter, the 4th through the 8th verses from the Amplified Version, the Classic Edition, and it's speaking about love, believing the best, therefore choosing the best. It says, love endures long and is patient and kind. Love never is envious nor boils over with jealousy, is not boastful and vainglorious, does not display itself haughtily. It is not conceited, arrogant, and inflated with pride. It is not rude, unmannerly, and does not act unbecomingly. Love, God's love in us, does not insist on its own rights and on its own ways. For it is not self-seeking. It is not touchy or fretful or resentful. It takes no account of the evil done to it. It pays no attention to a suffered wrong. It does not rejoice at injustice or unrighteousness, but rejoices when right and truth prevail. Love bears up under anything and everything that comes, is ever ready to believe the best of every person. It hopes are faithless under all circumstances, and it endures everything without weakening. Love never fails, never fades out, or becomes obsolete or comes to an end. Why? Because love is forever. And when we are saved, we have the God who is love in us. And we need the word of God 
like this scripture passage that we are voice activating daily so that we can have that scripture in our heart and Holy Spirit will help us bear the fruit of love. Now on our program today, you're going to rejoice in hearing D. White as he presents my prayer reign. Now in his song, he says, hey, it feels like it's too much, but we know that the Lord will never give us more than we can bear because he also gives us the way of escape from any temptation. What is it? The temptation not to love. But let's hear my prayer reign. D. White, and I'll be right back.
Welcome back to King's Portion. Again, the theme of our program today is the tsunami blessing inside and out. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has conferred to all mankind. The one who rules is the same one who owns and occupies. The larger your territory, the greater your options are. Open your heart to God and allow him to enlarge it with his dreams. Open your mouth to Jesus and allow him to fill it with the Logos word and the Rhema word that are enlarged over any enemy. Open your womb that is non-gender specific to Holy Spirit so that he can enlarge your territory. Then Elohim, the triune God, will enlarge your steps so that you will never be overthrown. Now this fifth section, we are going to address your level of security and maturity acknowledges your vow to live humbly and honorably before the Lord. Isaiah, the first chapter, the fifth through the seventh verses are part of a vision that the prophet Isaiah saw about Judah and Jerusalem. Because the Lord desired to be their only way of escape, he first uncovered what they could not see for themselves. Afterward, they saw their disparity that was polar opposite of God's perspective. Now from the expanded Bible, it says, why should you continue to be or do you insist on being punished, battered, struck down? Why do you continue to turn against him, rebel? Your whole head is hurt, bruised, wounded. Your whole heart is sick, faint, weak. There is no healthy spot, soundness, from the bottom sole of your feet to the top of your head. You are covered with wounds, bruises, hurts, sores, welts, and open sores, raw infected wounds that are not clean, pressed out, and covered, bandaged, and no medicine takes away the pain, not soothed, softened with oil. Your land is ruined, desolate. Your cities have been burned with fire while you watch right in front of you. Your enemies, foreigners, strangers are stealing everything from destroy, devour your land, your fields, your crops. It is ruined like a country destroyed, overthrown by enemies, foreigners, strangers. You see, God's motive is always pure and perfect at all times. He never badgered them with hindsight where they would be lodged in regret. The Lord gave them insight so that they could move forward to obtain foresight for their future good success in him. Therefore, he tenderly unveiled their sin, the transgression and iniquity so that they would receive maximum recovery from him. They required their breaches to be healed, hedged, and hushed. And our God was the only one qualified to make them whole and well. That remains the absolute truth that you can absolutely trust for yourself too. The Lord desired them, as well as you, to experience and enjoy bounce back breakthrough, breach proof breakthrough, and back to back breakthrough. Therefore, to complete his desire in them required their permission to grant access to God. That holds true. For you too. As their accountability partner, God unveiled the real image of their underlying condition. They did not have any soundness in them at all. Their breaches were not only unhealed, but they were incurable. Their breaches were not only unhedged, but they had gaping wounds. Their breaches were not only unhushed, but they had caused excruciating pain. Unfortunately, they experienced 
one breach after another. Maybe that's your story and it might be similar to theirs, but if it is, that was not the end of their story nor yours. In Isaiah, the 32nd chapter, the 18th verse, highlights the promise of God to be whole and well from the inside out. It reads from the King James Version, and my people shall dwell in peaceful, that is healed habitation, and in safe dwellings, that's a hedge dwelling, and in quiet resting place, that is hushed place. The Lord has already provided a healed habitation that carries his perfect peace, shalom. He has provided a hedged dwelling that is absolutely sure. He has also provided a hushed resting place that is extremely quiet. Your invitation to Christ permanently moves your residence from just being a site for visitation to be a perpetual habitation of God, preserved as a habitation of God through Holy Spirit. Jesus Christ dwells in your heart as Savior by faith. From that posture, you continue to live yielded to Christ as Lord all the rest of your life. But that may not be your position right now, but it can be because I'm going to offer to you the invitation to Christ. You can come as you are. That's the qualifications that you believe that Jesus Christ is Lord, that he is blood paid for your reinvention, for your new birth. So why don't you say this prayer after me? Say, Dear Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, I acknowledge Jesus as my Savior. I acknowledge his blood having the power to reconcile me to you, Father. And I acknowledge his blood that redeemed me from the old life to a new life. I acknowledge that I need a Savior and Jesus is the only way. So I ask you to forgive me of every sin, every transgression, and that you have not imputed any iniquity upon me. Please cleanse me with the precious blood of Jesus. So old things passed away and new things have come. And I acknowledge you ask my Savior, come into my heart. Be the Lord of my life. And now I know I am the newest creation in the body of Christ. And I thank you for my salvation. If you said that prayer, why don't you email us at info at kingsportionlive.com. That's info at kingsportionlive.com. We'll send you some encouragement along the way. Now let's return to remaining portions of King's Portion Live after this message from our sponsor. We invite you to visit our new interactive website. Please log on to www.kingsportionlive.org. That's www.kingsportionlive.org. We believe that you will discover something that will speak to the royal blood in you. Thanks for staying tuned for the conclusion of our program today, which bears the theme, the tsunami blessing inside and out. The heavens are the Lord's, but the earth he has conferred to all mankind. Now, the one who rules is the one who owns and occupies. The larger your territory, the greater your options are. Open your heart to God and allow him to enlarge it with his dreams. Open your mouth to Jesus and allow him to fill it with the Logos word and the Rhema word that are enlarged over any enemy. Open your womb that is non-gender specific to Holy Spirit so he can enlarge your territory. Then Elohim, the triune God, will enlarge your steps so that you will never be overthrown. Now this sixth section, we are going to address your security 
and maturity acknowledges your passion to live with a merry heart. Now, having personal knowledge that the Lord God is your defense, the impenetrable rock of refuge, you cannot help but host a merry heart. So you want to become familiar with the word merry as joyous. That is a glorious and triumphant state that never changes positions, no matter what it may face, but it changes conditions in your favor. I'm going to say that again. Look at Mary as being joyous, a glorious and triumphant state that never changes positions, no matter what it may face, but it changes conditions in your favor. In Proverbs, there are at least three scriptures that influence obtaining and retaining a merry heart. First in Proverbs, the 15th chapter, 13th verse, a merry heart resonates you as more than a conqueror from the inside out. That's breach, proof, breakthrough. From the King James Version, it says, a merry heart Make it a cheerful countenance, but a sorrowing heart, the spirit is broken. So a merry heart then can be seen on the countenance of your face and your total presence. Make smiling an integral part of your daily routine, even if you're by yourself. You always feel different when you are smiling than when you are frowning, your insides get renewed and revived. Practice smiling until it is so contagious that laughter abounds and you even look for things to laugh about. Show its power to transfuse every part of your being as well into your world. Now, secondly, Proverbs 15, 15, a merry heart is resilient because it holds the capability of back-to-back -back breakthrough. From the King James Version, it says, all the days of the afflicted are evil, but he that is of a merry heart has a continual feast. It is relentless. That is a merry heart. Therefore, resistless in battle. Although affliction may surround you, Holy Spirit ensures that it's not present within you because you image the word of God in action. Thirdly, in Proverbs, the 17th chapter, the 22nd verse, a merry heart recovers from any incurable disease or irritating disease. From the King James Version, it reads, A merry heart doth good like a medicine, that means a cure, but a broken spirit drieth up the bones. It holds the perspective advantage of bounce back breakthrough. No matter the condition it faces and even if the case worsens, every knock against it is a boost that moves it forward. For those reasons, Proverbs, the 21st chapter, the first verse, encourages you to surrender all of your heart under anointing and the power of the Lord's hand to revivify you from the inside and out. That is to renew and to revive you. In the case of Holy Spirit, he cleanses your heart with the word of God and removes any contaminants from its cavity. It reads from the King James Version, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord as the rivers of water. He turns it whistleever he wills. So the king's heart that would be you as a king priest because he wants to make sure that when we have that merry heart, then we are not 
subject to any woundedness. How would we like to leave this program today? All the creation that God made alongside Jesus Christ and Holy Spirit was for the purpose of land redevelopment. Their original creations, Adam and Eve, were to work it and guard it as they enlarged their territory through their expansion efforts. Although they were evicted from the land that was their God-given inheritance, the Garden of Eden, the abundant life, the eternal life, and the resurrection life are still made available to you through your redemption rights that are only in Jesus Christ. This is Captain Joy Foster for King's Portion, where we feature the royal blood in you. You have been listening to the King's Portion with radio host Catherine Joy Foster. Today's podcast is available for download. Log on to blog.kingsportionlive.com or email info at kingsportionlive.com.